hi sweeties how are you doing welcome to naya sim if this is your first time of coming across this channel sweetheart smash that subscribe button turn your notification so you are notified each time i upload and please give this video a thumb up i appreciate you all so much and i'm saying a very big shout out to every one of you for the support you will shower me here with i am grateful you are sweet so today this is an update from the video michael rapperbot made saying that black people are calling for ceasefire because they are not the ones going through what is happening and that he expected black people to support the jews over what is going on but black people are not and black people already called him out and still calling him out to this very moment telling him that their support to anybody is not transactional that what they are doing is bad and then at this point i found out that Jews had so many, 80-something 80, 80 percent of Jews had slaves back then. And not just only that, a particular farm sold about 10,000 black people into slavery. And a lot of black people are also coming out to stitch to the video. Like there are thousands of videos. I mean, black people are angry. And then reminding them about what they have done to them in the past and what black people are still going through till this very moment that for him to come out and call black people out over this or just black people drag black people into this is just uncalled for let's get into this video black people from america if they were taken well hello there boy i'm about tired of y'all opening thin lips to spew nonsense that's why god made your lips small to encourage you not to talk as much. Look like an old withered potato. It's so odd to me that Jewish people think they can demand black support and continuously bring us up. Y'all had no problem in Charleston when 83% of you owned enslaved African people. You had no problem when this Jewish firm sold 10,000 slaves. And I know it says here that even if the Jews didn't settle, it would have been inconsequential to the slave trade. But that's because y'all were small in number. If there were more of you over here, y'all would have owned more slaves. Because like it says, any Jew who could afford to own slaves and had need for their services would do so. And here's a nice little ad, Negroes for Sale, by a Jewish company meaning a lot of Jewish families here have built their wealth off the backs of black people too. So like I've said before, boy, you cannot demand the support of the oppressed to the oppressor. And this is not anti-Semitism. This is fact. Y'all are okay if I say white people, but if I bring up any other of our oppressors, then you have a problem. Leave us out of your invisible-lipped mouth. Your country is responsible for genocide of black Africans in Africa. You're responsible for blood diamonds. You do not get to demand our support. I'm so sick of every community demanding the support of black people. Because during the Black Lives Matter movement, you painted a fucking mural of George Floyd and did some Black Lives Matter posters. Meanwhile, your country is committing genocide against the same fucking people you claim to support. African Americans, we really have to get it together. Y'all are saying that I am portraying my community as an African American because I support Africans. You African Americans are looked at no differently than Africans from the continent. It pisses me off because you're so short sighted. We as African Americans will never get liberation unless the Africans amongst the diaspora gain their liberation. The things they do to us, police brutality, medical racism, their prejudices, it's all because we're African. They view us as inferior because we're African. At this point, I feel like African-Americans don't want true liberation. 
You just want to take the spot and be cozy, cozy with white people. You don't want to be accepted for who you are as an African-American person. You want to be able to assimilate. And at this point, y'all are acting like the other white countries who came over here and dropped their identity so that they could be included in white supremacy. Y'all want to be Americans and separate yourself from everyone else in the diaspora. But you'll scream free Congo because it's popular. What about the rest of Africa? What about Sudan and the rabid support forces offing babies? Massive trigger warning. This one says, one says she was stopped at a roadblock where Arab militiamen offed the men in her group. When they saw her 15-month-old son strapped to her, they shot him as he clung to her. The bullet burst through his tiny body and into hers where it remains lodged. Y'all need to stop trying to use black people. We are not a fucking pawn. And we have our own issues to take care of. Because your Black Lives Matter posters don't mean shit. Where y'all are anti-black as fuck. And abuse the black people in y'all's countries. Israel kicking out all the African immigrants. So no, you don't get to demand our support. You are an oppressor. Civilians. All African American, all black, all Asian. Is this a safe space? Like, can I talk my shit real quick? Now, if you follow me on other social media, you know that I've been very vocal about this entire topic, mostly on Twitter and Instagram, because I feel like that's where majority of my followers have the most face-to-face um, -face communication with me, if that makes sense. It's just more personal. But I saw this video on Twitter, and I could, I was gobsmacked and I shared my words but I I need to vocalize them I need to get it out why is it that you are unable to exclaim and to express the need the rightful need for Israeli hostages to be released safely without hypothesizing violence against black people how did we end up in it how do we always end up in it some way, somehow, you have to find a way, and I've seen this a lot. I have seen this a lot across the board, across social media, throwing black people, throwing LGBTQIA plus people into the conversation and into the violence. For what? I've seen it several times of, do you know what Hamas would do to you as a black person? Do you know what Hamas would do to you as a gay person? They would burn you. They would do this to you. They would kill you. They would rape you. They would shoot you. Are you kidding me? I feel that we have lost the plot, I fear. There has to be a way to express the need for one thing without dragging in another thing and making it painful and harmful. Being loud, wrong, and offensive is not going to garner you minority support. And making up hypothetical instances where violence would be inflicted upon us as if that shit doesn't happen every single day already? Like, what are we really talking about? What are we really talking about? Because if you want to talk about people going missing and being murdered, and these things happen to Black people often, actually every single day. There are currently Black children being sold into sex trafficking in metropolitan cities, in broad daylight, in Washington, D.C., minutes from where I'm from, these things are happening. We don't need to make up hypotheticals about the possibilities of these things happening. And I definitely don't feel a need as a Black person to bring that up and say, well, if it was a this person or if it was a that person, they would have already But What good does that do? But also, as minorities, we know that if the person who was in the instance was white, it would be plastered all over the news. Our stories don't make local, national, or global headlines, but they're still happening every single day. And yet somehow, some way, you think that if it was black people that this was happening to, it would make the news and everybody would be chanting in the streets about it? Why? Because we had a few instances of viral moments that happened that were caught on tape that people obviously had a public outcry about and, and that's the reason why we know their names? 
Something's telling me you didn't think this one through. But leave us out of it. Please, leave us out of it. In this way, we don't want to be a part of it. I'm speaking for the Black congregation when I say this. Us showing support and allyship is not a transactional thing. At least not for me. Like, if something is right or if something is wrong, I'm going to speak up on it no matter who you are or where it's at or whatever the fuck. But it is so disheartening to see the amount of people that are willing to make up these scenarios where we are the targets in order to make their point. Uh, maybe I'm missing it. Maybe I'm missing it. I don't know. Also, maybe get up and like shower. Looks like it's been a while. If 20 American civilians. Watch the rest of that video for context, but I want to clear up a few things and this, these talking points that he's making can be debunked pretty easily. First off, the accusations that Hamas or whomever else in Palestine is graping Israeli hostages have been debunked at least by the hostages that were previously released well before the ceasefire. As for the accusations of murder, IDF has admitted, and so have third-party investigators, that at least a third of the people who were shot and killed at that music festival were shot and killed by IDF soldiers. The rest have been indeterminate. And this is actually what was said from day one from the people who were at the festival was that IDF showed up three hours after the fact and opened fire on their own people. Now let's talk about Michael Rappaport essentially using anti-blackness to try to paint people who are pro-Palestinian as anti-Semitic. We know for a fact that black lives don't matter in the U.S. the way that other people's lives do. Otherwise, the Black Lives Matter movement would have never started. All the civilians in the United States would have seen cops shooting and killing unarmed black people and they would have been just as livid of it about it and would have called for accountability for it just like all the black people living here but it's not just blm that makes me sure that his little hypothetical scenario was pulled out of thin air let's talk about the uss liberty in 1967 specifically june 5th through june 10th of 1967 israel was in a six-day war with syria jordan and egypt over what? Land, I mean religion. And during that six day war, specifically on June 8th, 1967, Israel bombed a ship called the USS Liberty. With a combination of air and sea attack, they bombed this ship, damaging it extensively, but also killing 34 of the men on board and injuring 171 people. But it wasn't Israel's fault, you guys. They thought that they were bombing an Egyptian ship. And so the president of the United States at the time, Lyndon B. Johnson, was like, mm, seems like an honest mistake to me, you guys. Like, you're going to give us money. I mean, fix it, right? And Israel did smooth things over with the United States, and they cut a check for $3.32 million to be distributed to the families of the 34 deceased. And then later on, they cut another check for $3.57 million to be distributed amongst the 171 wounded. And in the 1980s, I believe it was December 1980, they cut another check for six million for the damage that the ship had sustained. If you read any books about this, written by Zionists and Zionist supporters, even if you Google this, it will never show up as a bombing, but always as the USS Liberty Incident. The United States did not care about a ship full of white military servicemen, U.S. spies, and U.S. scientists. So the idea that they would care about 10, 20, 100 black civilians on foreign soils of current allies doesn't hold water. I would say ceasefire, but I've never been team ceasefire and Israel has broken the current ceasefire within an hour. I am team land back. I am team free Palestine from the river to the sea. Back, and they better be, they better be alive. What? Did I hit it right? That Go watch this video. Please tell me. I, I need to know before I jump to conclusions and hurt myself. Um, 
Is he saying that if it was 10 African American hostages, America would stop what they doing and get them? Am I hearing that right? Am I am I hearing that right? Did I? I watched the video like three times. I'm trying to see if I if I got some me, me, messed up. Did, did he say? Is he saying that America if I actually value us? If it was ten, if it was all African American hostages, they would have stopped what they were doing to get us. Did did I not get the memo? Did did we not get the memo? Did, did something happen overnight that I don't know about that we got liberated and we got value? Is is something wrong? Or is it an alternate universe? Is something? What the what the fuck is going on? Did did we get reparations and didn't know it? I mean, is reparations a part of this rescue? I'm trying with this rescue plan. I'm trying to understand what's happening because I I think he's trying to say that we were valuable and America would stop everything they doing to go get us if it was American, black, if it was African Americans, black Americans. Do we mean African Americans, like straight up Africans that come here and get their citizenship as American? Is that what he mean? Because I, I'm, y'all help me. Because I, I, I want to understand what he's saying. Is he saying what I think he's saying or am I just, am I hearing it wrong? Just tell me. Yo, if 20 American tourists. Okay. Here we go again. You forgot that us black Americans in history, we were lynched, we were murdered, we were kidnapped. Our black sisters were raped sodomized oh but you you basically again want to join because you're jewish you want us to support the israeli crisis i'm gonna tell you something you didn't say anything when trayvon martin was murdered you didn't say anything when when um when Laquan McDonald was murdered, you didn't even say anything when Mike Brown was murdered. Not one word. All of a sudden now, because of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, you want black people to support your cause. I'm disappointed in you, Michael Rappaport. I'm really disappointed because it seems to me you just want clout. You just want. You, you just want to be seen and heard. This is nothing compared to 500 years of captivity. Nothing. And you had the audacity to attack us black people because we don't support what you say, what you do. You was in films with basically Spike Lee, the late great John Singleton. But then turn around, you want to talk about, oh, well, black people don't support, uh, it, 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 it will not request a ceasefire. You forgot about our history. When we were slaves, when we, we were kidnapped, lynched, murdered, but you don't say a damn thing about it. How disgraceful you are, Michael Rappaport. What you said is a disgrace and, and un-American. We as black people has every right to not even get involved or say anything about it. But you want to run your mouth. I got three words for you, Michael Rappaport. Shame on you. Yo, if 20 American tourist y'all can go watch this idiot's video if you want to but look i did a video earlier about this saying that you shouldn't be putting black people in your mouth at all black people mind their own business and here you come with your racist but wanting to put us in everything it doesn't matter about race it matters everything about children dying now tiktok lets you put a, a strike on my account saying harassment and bullying which is just bullshit <clears throat> ain't no one harassing you. Ain't no one bullying you. But I am calling you out for your crap. 
and you, like a coward, decided, oh, I'm going to report this for harassment and bullying. Look, dude, they can just, I, I had an account before of over 2,000 people. TikTok can take this account. I will make another account on this crappy app and continue to speak my truth because I'm not afraid of TikTok or you because your feelings are hurt. And I will continue to do that constantly because people like you are the problem with this world. Stop putting black people in your mouth. Leave black people alone. You're racist. You need to look at yourself in the mirror. You need help. You need help. This is about children dying. So cease fire. Yes, cease fire. And if you can't understand that, something is definitely wrong with you. You need to look in the mirror. And if you want to put this up for harassment bullying, just make another video, dude. Stop being such a coward. All African American, all black. And there was 10 surviving American tourist hostages that were all black. There's not one motherfucker in this country that would be talking about cease fire. <laughs> White people are so funny when they play the victim because they don't know how it works. Because he's saying if the hostages were black, nobody would be asking for a ceasefire. I agree. You're right. Because it wouldn't be a fire. To, you think America's going to war to rescue them? Are you insane? I, that's so cute. I think it's so cute that you think that. It must be nice. It must be nice to live knowing in your head that your country will go to war to rescue you. And then you come out here and say like, if it was you, no, it, they won't go to war. It doesn't apply to everybody. This only works for you. What, get the fuck out of here. That's so cute. I think it's so cute that you think that. Because America that I'm living in, they still mad about Britney Griner. And it wasn't a war. It was a prisoner exchange. She was going to go to prison for nine years in Russia. And they were like, hey, this is, g give us her and we'll give you a prisoner. That's Russian. And everybody freaked out. And they still mad about it. They still hate it. You telling me they'd be okay with America going to war. Get the fuck out of here. Incoming stitch. American, African American people. It's okay to assume how I would feel as a black person, but really, you have no idea because you don't wear this avatar, okay? Black people are reasonable, compassionate, civil, loving, kind, and gentle people. I'm not talking about the Negroes you see running in the streets acting a fool. I'm talking about real black people, man. We are the most loving, kind, generous people on this earth, man. We don't want all those civilians being killed by Israel or anybody else, man. We don't want nobody to die if you can't tell. African Americans love in a major way, man. You don't know how we would feel and what we would say. Let's stop speaking in hypotheticals. Stop trying to excuse what Benjamin Netanyahu is doing. In all black, all ages, we're taken hostage. Hey, Michael, stop putting my people all up in this war. Yo, this war has nothing to do with me and my people. You insist on us cheering for Israel. We're not cheering for a, a country that's killing innocent people. You ain't even fighting army people. A war, nothing. You killing innocent people and children. We're not supporting that. And as you can see, the world is not supporting that either. Michael, we're not fucking with you. You and your people have destroyed the world. The world. And you're still saying African Americans is a threat. We ain't got nothing to do with shit. American tourist hostages that were all black. There's not one motherfucker in this. Whoever gave him his uh barbecue pass or whatever he think he invited to <laughs> need to take that thing back man when the last time black person got held for hostage and, and it was taken seriously like in for never <laughs> everybody know if you go kidnap a black kid and i mean i used to tell my son don't oh, get yourself kidnapped because they call him making demands about you know you gotta have so much to get them back i'd be like dang <laughs> Yo, if 20 American tourists I would love to get on here and call you all types of names 
called you all types of uh, uh, derogatory names, belittle you as far as your manhood and things of that nature. You know, I would love to just sit here and just, you know, assassinate your character, Mr. Rappaport, and, and call you all types of, you know, chumps and and soft MFers and, and things of that nature. But what's going on in Israel is is your karma. Okay, it's your so it's it's a solution to to your problems. Okay, if you want to stand for Israel, you go over there and fight with Israel. If not, shut the fuck up. Twenty American civilians, all African American, all black, all ages, were taken hostage. First off, if black people were kidnapped, nobody wouldn't even give a fuck. So you need to stop the cap. You need to stop the cap. And you need to stop the fake outrage when it comes to black people. I mean, Israel is genocizing those people. I'm sorry, but not sorry. I said it. Fuck Israel for what they doing. I said it. I said it again. Fuck Israel for what they doing. Genocizing people. And if you think that shit's okay, then fuck you too, bruh. And I don't care who you are and what you do, Remy. So this is all I got from this video and I already brought this here. You all know that and uh, I found out that a lot of people refused to and I saw pe people were also sending message emails to me like to uh, co do continuation and trust me it's a whole lot of videos like people really got a lot to tell Michael Rappaport because he has been on black people's business and black people already telling him that he should uh, stop calling them. The only person he has the right to talk to is just his black wife. And I don't see a reason why they think black people, I mean, why are black people threats to them? Number one is that black people's support to anybody is not transactional. Anything they are doing or they are saying is because they know that what is going on is wrong and they are speaking against what is going on. And then I am saying a very big kudos to black people because when you go to TikTok, I mean, they are the ones that made most of all this known to people before other people join to camp, like, you know, to talk about what is going on. So, yeah. He feels that black people are talking about it so much and not supporting the Jews because black people are probably trying to pay them back for whatever. But this has nothing to do with paying back or something. This is black people speaking the truth. And I don't see a reason why every day Michael wakes up and he drags black people into it. Number one is that black people do not have any connection with what is going on in Israel, Palestine, and all that. It is none of black people's, but whatever they are speaking up is because they are speaking up because they know what is going on is wrong. And they are doing it because they want you people to eventually come back to help them or assist them. But then when you look back, you can also trace back to where Palestinians also supported Black Lives Matter and all that. Michael Rappaport is a red deceased you all know that already he has really done so many videos like you know dragging black people into what it's going on which got no nothing to do with black people and then he is not just dragging people black people into it he dragged black people into it in a horrible or not nice way how do you wake up and all you can say is if it were black people that this is happening to but then let's talk about it black people have really been through it i mean slavery for how many years 
systemic racism for how many years? What is it that has not happened to them? They have been kidnapped, they have murdered and died, and the rest of it. So dragging black people into it is very disrespectful. And then from the first lady that spoke, you can also see the connection of the juries, what they did to black people. This was actually one of the main reasons why I said I am bringing this here so we all can say it, that they have really done some horrible things to black people and they sit back and all they think is that uh, they want black people to come in. Like how do black people help you people in this situation when you all are ready to desist already? And you all have also the nerves to go and pay iPad, right? to unseat black people like how do you people wake up and all you people all you do and break is black people get over black people leave black people alone and uh stop dragging black people into your bs see you all in my next video bye for now